Hello and welcome back for part two of conics applications and in this episode I'm going to talk about the ellipse. So let's just get right into it. Um, there are a lot of different characteristics you can talk about with an ellipse. I just chose a few that I thought were important. Um, so let's start with the major and minor axes. When you're looking at an ellipse, um, you have kind of like the longer length, either from left to right or top to bottom. So it can be horizontal or vertical, but yeah, it's just the longer length. And then the minor axis, um, you can probably tell is just the shorter length. So it can be either vertical or horizontal. And both of these axes are just kind of showing that um, this ellipse takes on an oval shape. So in my diagram, the major axis is horizontal and the minor axis is vertical. We also have two focus points. Um, in this case, we got one on the left and one on the right. And actually, if you're talking about a circle, you only really have one focus and it's at the center. And then also the major axis and the minor axis are the same length. So a circle is really just a special ellipse, <laughs> which I mean, yeah, it's kind of weird to think of it that way, but it really is. And when we're looking at applications, um, for this episode, I'm going to talk about Kepler's second law. There are a lot of different applications, but I think this one would be fun. So anyway, if you have a planet going around this ellipse here, we got the sun at one focus, it's going to cover equal areas in equal amounts of time. And so let's imagine this here. If I have a planet starting at point C, it's going to go to point D. So that arc right there. And keep in mind that this blue area is equal to the red area. So it goes from C to D. Let's say it does that in two days. It's going to keep going around, get a little closer to the sun. And then it's going to go to point A and then to point B. So what this law is saying is that the planet will take two days to go from C to D. It will also take two days to go from A to B even though that's a much longer distance. So it seems kind of weird, but we're gonna talk about how it can do that. And then one more characteristic, this will tie in to Kepler's second law, is eccentricity. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but it's all I could really manage. And um, in simple terms, it's just how much of an oval um, the ellipse is. So an E value of zero, um, it kind of looks like a circle actually, that's a good way to remember it. Um, an E value of zero, it's just a circle, so not an oval whatsoever. An E value of one is going to be very stretched out, so there's this huge difference between the length of the major axis and the length of the minor axis. So I know that was a lot of information, but here are some characteristics of an ellipse. Now I want us to look at an example here. We have Mercury. This application doesn't run very well on my computer, so if it's laggy, I am sorry. Um, there are two different things I want us to look at. We have an E value right here, and that's going to be 0 0.2. So kind of an ellipse, um, closer to a circle. And then the next thing I want us to pay attention to is the speed. So notice how when Mercury gets close to the sun, it's going about 60 kilometers per second. Yeah, so 60. And then when it's far away from the sun, we're looking at more 40 kilometers per second. So you can see that the speed is definitely changing. And more than that, the speed is faster when it is closer to the sun. Now, this kind of helps explain why Kepler's second law is able to work. Um, it's just that the planet actually changes speeds as it goes around the sun. So the Earth is not constantly moving at one speed. In order to cover those equal areas, it needs to speed up at some parts. And so I want us to manipulate this a little bit. Let's say we gave this an E value. Oh no, we gave this an E value of zero. Okay, so I just turned it into a circle. 
this thing is really fun. You can like do anything in here. And look at that. The speed stopped changing. That's because we don't have the sun at this focus and it's not going to be closer to the sun at one part and farther away at another part. Um, to cover equal areas and equal amounts of time, um, those distances are not changing at all. If you think of it as like a pizza slice, they're not getting skinnier or wider. It's just kind of same distances around, if that makes sense. Um, actually, I have a picture that'll probably help explain that. So here's an ellipse, and you can see these like little slices I'm talking about. That black point would be like the sun. So you can see that when it's farther away, um, we stretch out our area, so our distance becomes smaller. When we are closer to the sun on the left side, um, our pizza slice gets wider, so we have a longer distance. If we're looking at a circle, there's no variation, so it doesn't have to change speeds. And so, yeah. So that is how, that's how planets um, cover equal areas and equal amounts of time. When they are closer to the sun, um, closer to that focus, the slices kind of increase, longer distance. So in order to cover it in that equal amount of time, it has to go faster. And we were able to see that with Mercury. And yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. So um, thank you for watching.